America Open Market, AO Market, the best digital market for humanity, is a free, multilingual, borderless market open to international sellers with various languages included. With America Open Market, you may start selling in minutes after filling out the form. Comprehensive dashboard where you understand your sales orders and customers is available. You get paid directly, securely, and instantly on the America Open Market. You can sell your house, car, electronic laptop, CD player, boombox, phone, headphones, furniture, and clothing and anything on AmericaOpenMarket.com where all your sales and customer needs are met. Register as a merchant today. You will not regret becoming a vendor at America Open Market. For further inquiries, contact us at aomarket at gmail.com. AO Market, best digital marketplace for humanity. Hello, welcome to World Inkers Network, and thanks for joining us as a viewer today. And I'm Dustin Pickering, your noble and honest host. And today, our guest is Damon Freed. He is an artist who cherishes balance, reason, and ambiguity, and expresses it through a variety of working methods, from abstract realities to non-objective paintings of grids and color wheels. He believes reality exists on the edge of perception. And while his mom and dad have been his greatest and best influences, Agnes Martin and Bryce Martin's work are among them. He has received his BFA from the School of Visual Arts in New York City, where he graduated with honors. Free taught at two places for 10 years at the college level. His first year was in 2009. His MFA is from Hunter College, City University of New York. Free has studied with such luminaries as Jack Whitten, Marilyn Minter, David Chow, Juan Sanchez, Sanford Wormfeld, Toby Kahn, Lucio Pazzi, Tim Rollins, Alicia Icock, Susan Creel, Anton Von Dalen, Susan Ack Anker, Don Cuspit, Donald Cuspit, Katie Seagal, among others. He has been exhibited in galleries in New York City, St. Louis, Kansas City, and Columbia, Missouri. And his writing, his influences are his mother and father, sisters and brothers, sister and brothers, and friends mostly. His inspirations are from family and dearest friends and people he meets in every direction. He has not been formally trained in poetry, but is an avid writer of works and spoken word. He has 13 books of poetry published, self-published. He has been published in by the Writer's Place Online and by the Rye Whiskey Review and is featured in our own uh, Parrot, uh, Literary Parrot's recent book. Um, check that out if you haven't already checked that out. Uh, you may find his collections of poetry in the Sedalia Public Library as well. Welcome to the show today, Damon. Nice to meet you again. Uh, so uh, what's new with you? I believe you have a book out from writers, uh, World Inkers Printing and Publishing. So uh, tell us a little bit about the book. What, what prompted the title, Go Forth? That's an excellent title for you know a good kick in the in the groin, I guess you could say. It's a it's a really interesting uh, you know way of, of presenting the work. So yeah, that's a is, that's a cover designed by our own producer Matiu. You yeah. can see the the art in the background and my background. Go forth, 2011 to 2022 poetry. So where does the title come from? So the the title comes from an inspiration I had. Um, one night sitting down to write. So before, you know, you get that, those, I got those two words in my head and I wrote them out and, and uh, the explanation, ex, 
exclamation point on the end was necessary. And that's the final kick in the rump. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully it, 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 it charges the viewer a, a little bit uh, to read. And uh, myself, when I get up to do spoken word, it's a challenge. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. <laughs> In that sense, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, just read, damn it. You know, when I get on stage, it's like, just read. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I know when I when I read sometimes when I when I would do performances, I'd just say, just do it, Dustin. Just just do it. You never yep. do it. So, do you have trouble doing um, you know, you know, public performances or anything like that, or do you have a routine you go through to practice? Uh, you know, I mean, I've done it often enough by now that I'm good at it. But uh, I nerves strike at strange times with me. Mm -hmm. So, um, I can, I can, you know, there can be a lot of ums, there can be a lot of ands, there can be, you know, many uh, stifling entries to the poem that kind of, you, you know, I have to brush off and not do that. And sometimes preface, it's a reminder not to preface poems all the time, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is uh you know something like billy collins you know i mean he nearly prefaces every poem that i've ever heard him read uh you know i i haven't heard him live in 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 uh you know person but but anything online that i've ever listened to him him and others you know but so yeah i i like to start yeah, just jump in and go at it, like jump in the water and swim. I learned that, I mean, you know, maybe I say a couple things about myself, but mm -hmm. not about the poem I'm going to read. I learned that early on through a friend of mine, Stuart Krimko. And um, there was a recording of him. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make that reading that night, but it was at Max Protech Gallery in New York City. I remember that distinctly. And I made his second reading, uh, but... You know, he was introduced, he walks up there to the microphone, says hi, greets the people, and just reads. Mm -hmm. I thought it was wonderful. Immediately you're engaged, you know. Wow. So you work oh. with, you're using your posts as a kind of engagement process, you know, trying to engage the viewers or readers as well. The best I can, because mm -hmm. the, the second you start to um, say what it's about, then you know, Dustin, as you know, it becomes about that for the first few lines. And, um, you know, you being a poet yourself, uh, you know, should know that, right? So I, I think in terms of, you know, not, I'm going to repeat myself here, um, not on this show, but it's, a, it's an analogy I like to use. Um, well, I'll just say this. The poem should be read in present tense. I try to do it that way. So mm -hmm. even if it's an older poem, what I mean by that is to, I try to get into that headspace and to locate myself within the poem. If I cannot, yeah, so that's how I do it. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so you, most of your poems are autobiographical and, and you base them on you know, real life experiences that you've had. Do you ever throw in a little fantasy in there? Just, just get a kick out of it. I do. Absolutely. Uh, you know, most are that way, uh, because if it were up to me, I would dredge around in my own sorrows the, until the end, you know, mm -hmm. but you've got to make something of the, po of the piece of the pieces. Um, so it's kind of like, you've got to save the poem by the end. It can't just be, I mean, well, it can. It, it can certainly be whatever it wants to be. Um, in an autobiographical sense, I try to be real, you know, with, with whatever I'm feeling at the time. Um, certainly, you know, if I do, I have this thing where truth and fact are different. Mm -hmm. To me, there's fact on one side, fiction on the other, 
and truth resides in the middle somewhere. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. So, so you, so you just kind of, it's sort of like a, you know, fact and, and fiction, you know, fiction is really, you know, sort of taking the truth and bending it a little bit and maybe putting some feelings into it or something, yes. you know, how would you yeah. just differentiate between fact and fiction? I'm as sorry. Far as your, how would you differ, differentiate in between fact so, and fiction as far as your own work? As far as my own work goes, fact, oh man, that's a great question, Dustin. Uh, <laughs> slightly slightly uh, stump, uh, well, let me, let me put it this way. Re of, of late, um, not all of my poems certainly happen this way, but of late I've been writing in, yeah, in third person. So when a poem begins, it's it's toward beauty mm -hmm. and if you're writing if i'm writing that way um that's not necessarily a factual account unless i'm depicting something beautiful i saw but or heard in, a, in dialogue speech something like that but i'm catering at times, which is a fault of my own, uh, to an end rhyme or to a formal uh, necessity wherein I go back and edit the poem, edit the poem's meaning. Mm -hmm. But I have to flush it out of my soul, you know. I mean, I mm -hmm. flesh it out, right? Not flush, but flesh. <laughs> um, Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Sometimes it is a little bit of both before the edit happens. Speaking of a kick in the groin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, they do that to us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, absolutely. You, you know, know, poetry to me, it's like, you know, as you mentioned, you know, you kind of, you're kind of like taking, you know, you're, you're collaborating with your, your soul, I guess you could say, you know, in a way to create something that's uh, of a form, you know, and you want to, you know, you're trying to to in, impose on that form something real at the same time something that's not real, you know. Right, right, yes. So you have that nugget of of fact, and then the fiction can't dissolve the fact entirely. That's why I call it truth, because mm -hmm. the the writing mechanism meets the real experience and the marriage of the two into truth hopefully hopefully each poem has something to offer in that regard you know mm -hmm. now that's up to the the listener the the, the viewer the uh you know uh to, to to you know however you know however that through discussion or on their in their own mind upon hearing the poem in their own gut in their own soul they make the decision of what it was about mm -hmm. i think <laughs> yeah yeah that's in part of the process is the reader's interpretation and and understanding what's going on and what the feelings <laughs> are and, yeah so from what i remember and i've read about half of the book i'd be i haven't read okay. the whole thing but i've read about half of it and uh, I remember there was a little bit of a mention of me in there. So tell us about that. When, when did that come up? <laughs> okay, so uh, that one is fighting with the man upstairs. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, upon our initial interview for this, mm -hmm. um, which was gosh a year ago, um, the first time you had me on my had you on this on on world Inc on on your your yeah. network yeah um i'm stumbling over my words the first time you had me on yeah i the initiative w was to yeah to locate you in the poem and i did that through sensing your love first and foremost, 
But then it goes on to say, I mean, I'm happy to read the poem um, today, but it goes on to say uh, something a little bit more powerful um, and turns out you, you know, it's like, here we are, I'm, I've been writing these poems and you're editing them and, you know, it's not always win or lose, you know, uh, but, and, and sometimes you're stronger than I am and I'm weak and that's what that's about, you know. Mm. Yeah, so, sort of a little bit of a slapstick feeling to it too. Is I, I remember the spatula was in there, and and <laughs> so forth. Leonard Cohen in there, you know. There uh, he is. is, you know. If I remember, that was the basic, you know, the basic thrust of the of the poem. Uh, if you, if anybody out there wants to check that out, the Go Forth is available from World Inkers at worldinkers.com under books. If you want to take a look at the. Uh, the um, poem itself, and go forth a nice paperback of about 500 and something pages of, of 10 years or so worth of uh, Damon's work and a beautiful cover. It does not have that stripe on it. If you buy the actual copy, yeah. that's reader's proof. So take a look at it. If you want to read the poem, feel free. Yeah, we'll, we'll get right, you started. Gonna, I should be reading from uh, the actual book, but this is what I have in front of me. So hopefully it makes due today. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I mentioned a wooden spoon um, in, in the poem. That's right. That spoon. <laughs> My mom, uh, you know, we, we never got hit with the wooden spoon, but boy, you know, and my dad, my dad actually was the enforcer, you know, at times mm -hmm. uh, of the belt. So, so my mom was the wooden spoon, my dad was the belt, and my babysitter was the switch. Hmm. And uh, at that time in, in uh, but rarely, I, I'll, I'll never forget, um, I put books down my, uh, <laughs> that's mm. a good metaphor. I should write about this sometime. I put mm. books inside my uh, drawers one time and uh, my drawers and <laughs> my dad came up with the, with the belt and, uh, or the wooden spoon, who knows, you know, and kind of like lightly tapped me you know with the with the, with the spoon as to as to get the job done in a loving way so that was pretty much when i knew it had come to an end you know any sort of uh in our household any sort of uh you know punishment hmm interesting so, yeah I, you know, and it's funny because my, my, uh, my, ah, you know, I don't want, I mean, it, I don't want to get too deep here today. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do you, what, you know, when you're writing, how do you choose the words? I mean, do they just sort of present themselves or how does the process go for you? Um, when I write, yeah, I mean, you know, they they come to me in in a in a speedy manner most of the eh, that's actually not true let mm -hmm. me take that back um so when i i gotta get my brain around this real quick if you know if i can have a moment mm -hmm. let me open the book to a page um yeah, so I opened the book to a poem, A Sin, which is about a 30-page poem um, in 12-point font, um, six by nine. <laughs> Actually, it's I about a minute. website down there, just in case everybody's watching. That's what that is. If you guys want to take a look at that as you're watching today. Sure, go and ahead. It was my, yeah, so thank you, thank you. It was, uh, thank you all. It was my intention to write this poem, A Sin, in a month, in a month's time. And okay. I succeeded, I did succeed um, with little editing from myself. Um, now, it comes to find out that poem was one that took, you know, as you know, or maybe, you know, a little bit more shaping up. So, um, 
the spelling was i mean a lot of incorrect a lot of uh uh incorrect spellings uh etc mm -hmm. i'm hor you know i'm a terrible speller i don't catch a lot of that uh off the bat you know that's why i did what i did you know so um it was good dustin thank you uh, to have someone who can look through the most of the book and um and fix it you know and my it was goes to my my colleague and, and business partner zm wise he did the he did the you know spelling and proofing yeah. for the book thank you thank you zachary so we'll uh we're gonna take a brief break but we'll be right back and listen to some of your works and uh we'll hopefully we'll, we'll enjoy that and everybody will be inclined to listen so thanks for watching the program today everybody. keep an eye out just a minute here and we'll be right back are you curious about financial literacy then take a look at professor anthony rivecchio's new program on Parrot TV. It's called Financial Focus University. This is an excellent program to learn about questions related to your own finances post-COVID and how, how you can manage your money, how you can work with your tax situation. And this is an excellent and informative discussion of financial literacy. With Professor Anthony Rivecchio, your financial problems will be solved at Parrot TV with Financial Focus University. Do you know that there is a publishing company that wants to make life easier for you as a writer? This publishing company is called World Inkers Printing and Publishing. We publish in all different languages, and we're looking for writers of all genres, all formats. We're looking for scholars, ghost writers, playwrights, poets, short fiction, novelists, you name it. We're looking for anybody who is interested in writing and the craft of writing to be in touch with us. You can reach us at info.worldinkers at gmail.com. With World Inkers Printing and Publishing, you do not require a lot of money to publish with us. Contact us today at info.worldinkers at gmail.com. Become a winner with other authors at World Inkers Printing and Publishing. Give us a shot. We, we will surely finish you. Welcome back to World Inkers Network. Thanks to our viewers today. And remember, you can leave comments during the program if you're enjoying it, if you're yes. interested in what Damon has to say. So let's get him on here with some of his poetry and uh, we'll listen from his book, Go Forth. So go forth, Damon. Okay, I'm going to go forth here. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. When Sue wears blue, you all. When Betsy Sue wears blue... Her eyes light up like two sapphire disks in the moonlight. Come with a rushing wind, nature. When Betsy Sue wears blue, a queen from some time dead Victorian day walks again. Blow your whistle, almighty nature. And the beauty of Betsy Sue in blue burns in my heart like the cobalt hue of the fire of the heavens. Sweet as right wind. Nature. Hmm. Thank you. Excellent. Good imagery there. Some a little bit of lyrical quality to it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Dustin. So what's the and next? What's that next. Easy money. It's not easy money. <laughs> <laughs> Doing what we do, but uh, right. here we go. easy money, you all. Uh, this is about a met guy I met in. Ah, see, there I go again. Easy money with soul in one hand out holding the tin cup. Sing it to yourself to change, to change, to change, to change, to change, to change. Yeah, he had soul. All right, every morning and every evening, he had soul. And I don't know if he's still kicking this man, but he had soul. And this destitute old boy earned every single penny, nickel, dime, and quarter he had coming. Unlike the bums. And that's the distinction between a bum and a destitute. The destitutes have soul. The bums are all washed up. Their souls have run south for good. Just like that old Mississippi runs downhill and empties into the Gulf. 
Well, their tears done dried up. Yeah, ain't no ocean at the end of their tears. Just rotten flesh and dry old cheekbones. Empty ebony sockets of evil. That's a bum for you. Turn their back on you. The second you hand them a sandwich or a 50. Doesn't matter, though. Old easy money had soul. And he mm. couldn't dance. Or maybe he could. And he couldn't rhyme. Or maybe he could. And he couldn't read. Or maybe he could. But boy, could he sing two lines better than me or Muddy Waters on a good night? <laughs> to change, to change, to change. To change, to change, to change. Yep. That's how he sang it all right. Just like that. And he was old and tired, so he'd sit on the stoop of that city, just owning the wind and the jackhammers and the rich and the poor. And I talked to him once. Couldn't understand a damn thing he was saying except two lines. But sure, we talked. And I was new to that city, but he took me in. And I took him in. And you know how they never tell you how hard things are going to be. Well, after one look at him, you just knew it was going to be a long, hard road ahead. And that goes for me, for you, for everyone, that is, if you want soul. So, easy mm. money. This one's for you. Mm. Except this time, I'm going to sing it to you. And if you're alive, and I know you are, whether up there or down here, you listen real close now, because it ain't mimicry no more. The pockets are dry, and there ain't no one around here but the sky. So I'm hoping when you hear this, you'll cry a little, like none of those bums ever could. Now fill my cup, baby. To change, to change, to change. To change, to change, to change. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Dustin. Wonderful. Um, I have one more if, 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 if it's acceptable. Sure. You got to hold on. Around here, the clock strikes noon and it's coffee and a macaroon. Yellow, pink, and aqua full of all that macaroon stuffing and the coloration of her chakra. And okra in the summers next to ham is a pleasant meal for us with some apple applesauce on the side. And I hide then onto the studio to do some work. Yes, I take that trip to that part of town. And the blacks all contribute to my mindset in here. And my friends are in fear of them. But really, I don't sweat them. Because all of them, and I, is running for the stuffy. And yet, and let it be for my little pink and yellow baby this morning. And God help us, Aqua is still draining from the spigots. And that the God upstairs is punching our tickets to the ride. But it's actually midnight and time to go. With a heavy glow from the coffee I'm sipping on. And the light is beaming. So I've got to let you down the hard way and not amidst my dreaming. There ain't no macaroon. There never was. There ain't even any goons to say goodbye or to quarrel with in this studio made of glass. But I ain't weeping inside of it, or maybe I am. I mean, you all just take your sideways glances inside from outside and keep on riding past us anyways. And if you didn't keep on trucking, I would probably murder you anyways. Justice is cruel at times. You know... It gets that way sometimes, beneath the heat in here, with the lamplight leaking and the sunshine bleeding all day and all night long, with my hands tired from typing and my eyes squinting from painting all day long, praying to the currency of love, to the currency of love. So yeah, I'll wake up half refreshed, like always, to the dark of 3 a.m. somehow, still holding on to it all, to the underglow of leafy, leafiness light 
to the shrub light of back porches and coffee, and perhaps I'll get lucky and catch a white bloom of strength where the glimmer of hope hides by day, but is reflected by porch light back to me and by crepuscular chance rays, serendipitous and ridiculous, all in the same striking ached, aching pissed off motion. And it's a mind, and it's a mental mind breaking potion of love and care in here and out there that gets us going again from here to there. So enjoy it at least this time. And it's time to go, to go anywhere but here, now. And it also queer. Thank you. Wonderful. I love the um, sort of the visual imagery and the actions going on in the poetry. Uh, do you consciously think about what you're writing before you write it, or do you just sit on the, with the page and just let it flow out? That's a good question, and I do. I, it's it's a conscious ebb, and okay. it's a hmm. you know like back and forth, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, There's a little improvision going on too at the same time. Like you're kind of playing like a, you know, you have a little bit of a plan and an idea in mind, but you kind of form it like, um, you know, like a piece of clay or something, you know? Not much, not much, not much mm. of a plan. Not much not of a plan. Not so much it's an anarchist plan. poem, no plan. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I think <laughs> yeah, that's a great question because there's always structure regardless because of the mm -hmm. title. The titles are uh, significant, you know. Uh, right. And that one's titled uh, "You Got to Hold On." Um, mm -hmm. in, in this moment, it just left me too, as, as to uh, you know, it's 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 also the. I want to say the last poem in the book, even though factually, it's not. Does that make sense? Um, it's 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 the third to last poem in the book. Um, so the crescendo dives after that. Okay. Down into the abyss, you know. So it's kind of like the last point. You know, maybe I should emphasize it, you know, Ain't it all so queer like that, as opposed to a downtrodden mood? It came out a little wrong, I think, in my reading there of it. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it, in, it, when reading it, I hope it's it, it leaves you on an even keel. Right. Well, obviously, you know, you want to entertain the reader and kind of they, they will, are going to read it their own way when they're reading it on the page. And then when you're presenting it, you know, in a way, you're you know, you're as a kind of an actor of the of the poem. You know, you're you're, you're showing them what what it can do, and, and when they're listening, the oral sense I think can be very stimulating. You know, as as opposed to just reading it on the page in your head, or you know, a lot of times sitting read poetry out loud to myself. You know, I, I read, for instance, all of Richard Wilbur's poetry to myself one one uh, one Christmas season. I spent that that whole season doing that, and that was fun. That's intense, Dustin. I have yeah. his his I have his uh, I think selected poems, which is you know also a tomb, and uh, an incredible one at that. Uh, that yeah, he guy, was he was amazing. Yeah. So, what are your influences as far as the writing goes? What what writers stimulate? What poets, especially, stimulate uh, you most to write? Boy, um, Kerouac. Um, I think uh, you know, early on, I know them, but recently, Dylan. Uh, actually, not his not. Not his poetry, though, as much as uh, his songwriting. Mm -hmm. uh, I glean a lot of information from songwriting. So that's why Leonard Cohen pops up in the work. Bob Dylan pops up in the work frequently, you know, because, I mean, these are idols of mine. Saints, saints, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, not just idols, but not idols, but saints. And I want to get that right, you know, straight. Uh, an idol would be like uh, Agnes. Black Black. Mm-hmm. Something. Yeah. Or, or an, an idol of mine would be, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Dickinson. Or um, even though I don't write like her, or um, Janet Frame, who at times... I do write like um, in my way, you know, I always stray from a very structured sentence format, you know, I mean, she, she, yeah, I mean, she, she, she would often start and end, you know, start with a capitalized word end with a a period or, you know, a comma at each, the end of each line. Uh, I mean, very structured. So, um, and then others, of course, she would leave open. But I, she's also a saint to me because, near, she, my God, she nearly run, won the Nobel Prize. Uh, you know, she's an Austrian. She's, she also was nearly, she was assigned a lobotomy. Mm-hmm. And she saved herself by putting her writing into the world from the hospital and a publisher came into the hospital consulted with the doctor and said this lady is not sick and saved her ass from being sick ultimately from being damaged yeah Mm -hmm. uh so very life-changing you know process a lobotomy i mean that back then i think it was she was from the like 50s and 60s or think wasn't she yeah, I remember reading her in um, high school in tenth grade. We we had an assignment of reading part of her one of her works, okay. yeah, from our from our book from our textbook. Very yeah. interesting. So uh, you know, a, 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 a sweetheart, um, a, you know, a girlfriend of mine, uh, Leah Wolf, uh, purchased uh, the Goose Bath for me uh, years ago. And I've been reading it, you know, I've read it probably enough by now, but, you know, um, certainly several times over. And, you know, the entry poem to the book, uh, Poet, is Janet Frames. I mean, w- would you allow me to read that? Do I have time? Go for it. We can let it close off with that. Okay. Thank you, Dustin. So this is the poem that... Uh, is it starts it off, you know. I mean, it, you know, it's before the contents, you know. It's a, it's a formality to a degree, but I like the poem. It's my favorite, as cliche as it may come off, it's my favorite poem of hers, among others. Poets. If poets die young, they bequeath two-thirds of their life to the critics to graze and grow fat in visionary grass. If poets die in old age, they live their own lives, they write their own poems, they are their own might have been. Young dead poets are prized comets. The critics cue with their empty wagons ready for hitching. Old living poets stay faithfully camouflaged in their own sky. Um, And it goes on. But you get the the meaning, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's who I want to be in the end, you know. So, what final words would you leave our viewers with today? Advice or any comments, wisdom, thoughts? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, just Buy, you know, go forth. Buy the book, go forth. World that's it. Buy my book and write. Read yeah, and look at go Bye. forth. Massive book for twenty-two dollars. You get over ten years worth of poetry, five hundred and thirty something pages, and a few good interesting quotes from the likes of John Dewey, you know, Janet Frame, so forth. Go forth with so forth. <laughs> or so forth with go forth. <laughs> Thank you, Dustin Picker. Thank you. Would you like to give any shout outs at the end here? Yeah, my parents, uh sorry for throwing you under the bus there. <laughs> <laughs> which I didn't do um, intentionally. Uh, it just so happens that uh, that came out of me. 
uh, but hey, you know, it's life. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I wouldn't have a book if it wasn't for them. So, you know, right. and myself, of course, and you, Dustin. So thank you all. Um, That's and my friend, website there, damonfreed.com. If anybody wants to check that out. So, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us today. And it's been really pleasant talking to you. And uh, hopefully we'll go forth and we'll see some sales on that book. And uh, there's also a hardback available. Fifty dollars on Amazon of uh, for it's an older edition, but uh, take a look at the Go Forth from World English Print. Hmm? Correction, Dustin, that's no longer available. Okay, so that's no longer on Amazon. Yeah, I, I withdrew that. So, um, okay. yeah. And All right, you know, so we'll have the paperback available with this wonderful right. cute art to hear from Damon's own artwork in his own studio, and uh, just take a look at the book. Just look for it. Have a look and, and uh, tell us what you think. Uh, you know, we have some samples, some excerpts online on uh, World Inkers Printing and Publishing's website at worldinkers.com. So take a look at that. And uh, we'll be back in Saturday. Thanks for joining us, Damon. And thanks to our viewers again for watching today. And remember, you can donate to the program at PayPal. Me slash NY Parrot. If you happen to have a little extra cash, just you want to support the arts and get us moving as far as we can go. We need as much help as we can get. Uh, purchase Damon's book if you have a chance. If you don't want to just give money away, you can buy the book or buy one of our other works. You know, that we've published. We have the Peace December Speaks anthology, the Speaks the Armistice, and that's a wonderful collection of peace activism work. Many more books coming in the future in the next few months. Watch for Vandana Kumar's book uh, in December. And uh, we have uh, Troy Camplin coming out with two books uh, in, in this probably in the next month. And we also have a wonderful anthology of Albanian poetry to be released uh, this month if, if everything goes according to plan. Unless there's delays, it should be this month. We're almost ready with that. So you can support us again at paypal.me slash NY Parrot. If you want to be on the show, we'd love to have you. Just write me at this address right here, publication.worldinkers at gmail.com with your headshot and a bio. Or if you want to put an image back here with it uh, instead of a, uh, your, um, your own headshot, we can do that. And don't forget the bio. It's very important. So I have some information to share with our viewers. And remember, you know, this program is every Saturday and every Tuesday. And Tuesdays at this time, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. And on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful afternoon. And uh, I'm going to put up J.D. Casey, for the fourth inter, um, comments here real quick. I'll definitely check it out. Thank you so much, J.D. And it's a great interview. Thank you again. So uh, go ahead and uh, go forth. Buy the book. And uh, we'll love to hear from you uh, in the emails. And uh, just have an excellent day. Get to writing. And uh, be sure to remember you can leave viewer comments and so forth uh, on our program while we're watching. And uh, take an ex have an excellent afternoon. So uh, as soon as I pull up the uh, the uh, ending spree here, remember I'm slow, uh, slow to, to come to the to the show. <laughs> here we go. And thank you very much for watching, everybody. Have a great afternoon. The Listen to the people. Listen to humanity. Listen to the parrot. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent. Listen to the people. Listen to humanity. Listen to the